in St Peter's. Interest rates in New Zealand are four times that of the USA, the UK, the EU and Japan, and he made that claim. But mind you, he made a claim that he advised Dame Margaret Baisley of a legal fund, and she was in charge of the parliamentary peculiar interest, excepting Margaret Baisley denied it. And yet he wants to come back being a minister when he told Parliament something was demonstrably not true. Look at the hand sign, it's all there. Yesterday, of course, the Maori Council won a right to take its case on state asset sales and water rights to the High Court. Just one tragic milestone along the road to separate development, apartheid, and assets divided up on the basis of race. How, under a national government that campaigned on Iwi, not Kiwi? No, they didn't, did they? They campaigned on Kiwi, not Iwi. How, therefore, has it come to this? What has New Zealand done to deserve this appalling government? What manner of a government is it that would plough on with its mis misguided asset sales programme in the face of all the damage it's doing? No sound economic rationale, and it gets worse. The whole process has been botched, so inept, so shambolic that it's now further undermining New Zealand's social cohesion and it is racism that they are encouraging. This very party that campaigned never to see that happen. A cynical person might even suggest that this government intended to have that effect as people overtook, overlooked the nation's interest and scrambled for their share of the spoils. Why did the government not foresee the discord its sales program would generate? Because it was spending 120 millions of dollars on consultants to give advice Surely one consultant said that. So many trails and twists and no coherence. Anyone remember Shares Plus? Well, last week it was Ewe Shares that were on offer coming out of nowhere. So now the proceeds of the asset sales program, unquantified of course, are going to pay off debt, pay for schools, pay for hospitals, and now we learn out of left field they'll also be contributing to treaty settlements. How many times can the same money get spent? Where's this all going to end? Who knows? They don't. They just blunder on, ad hoc, shoot from the hip, chaotic, make it up as you go along. And despite the serious damage that's been inflicted on our country by this issue, how petty and small-minded some people are becoming, including the Prime Minister. In response to Rahui Kartani of the Murray Council on the question of the right to go to court, this is what Mr Key said. Quotes, hardly a victory when you get the judge to agree to your case. So there you have it again. Just spray and walk away. A classic clear one-liner, dismissive, flippant, sneering. Now what is clear is that the issue will fester and create future dispute and discord. And how many now think that the country is being held to ransom by certain Maori interests who want to exploit the situation to their own advantage? For those who want to undermine our social cohesion, their assets program has been a gift. It has put Maori against other New Zealanders, and Maori against Maori, and Iwi against Iwi. What a mess. What a way to run a country. And what a tragedy for New Zealand that someone is saying behind that court case, when the water passes over our land or rohe, the proprietorship right is with us. Which part of the water? The foundation, the middle part, the end part, or when it runs out to sea? And what a tragedy for New Zealand. But the polls say, and this is the only good news of this speech, that we will soon have to address this issue and set it to rights. Jonathan Young. Mr.